Hi, my name is Graydon Blair from Utah Biodiesel Supply, and today we're going to talk a little bit about a few tips and tricks for brewing biodiesel when it's cold outside. It's not a lot of fun. Um, when you go out collecting oil in the cold, a lot of times you can find this. Nothing but a big, goopy mess. Not a lot of fun. First thing you're going to have to do to tackle cold weather is to figure out how to get the oil home in one piece and make it easy. Uh, there's a couple different things. If your oil is gelled up like this, you might need to get a lift gate to transfer those barrels home. If it at least moves like it's pudding or yogurt dish, you can use a heavy duty transfer pump. And we carry two of those. We carry a gas powered transfer pump and we also carry an electric powered gas pump. But in all in the worst case scenario you can use a lift gate and just move the barrels i have a customer that's done that for years okay once you get the oil home then what well first of all the best thing you can do is heat up the brewing area that you're going to make biodiesel in if you don't have that option then what you can do is use uh, 55 gallon drum heaters and heat your oil up so that it's at least somewhat liquid so that you can then filter it once you get it in a liquid form then you can transfer it through filters uh, you can use poly filters. We have 55 gallon drum filters as well as 55, uh, 5 gallon bucket filters. But the ones that we really like in the cold are our stainless steel filters. They filter all the way through both sides and on the bottom. And if your oil is thick, like this, you can get a heat gun out and heat that filter up and the oil will flow through it easier. Uh, we like to use about 400 microns in our shop. Our oil goes into a BioPro 190, so if that helps you. Um, most biodiesel people I hear use about 300 to 400. If you need a rough filter at a restaurant, 600 microns, great. Um, okay, once you've got the oil filtered, now you're ready to titrate it. Titrating oil, again, isn't a lot of fun if it's like this. So what I recommend that you do is heat that oil up either with a heat gun or you can take a little tiny uh, jar of it and put it in a microwave and heat it up. And your isopropyl alcohol is also going to be need to be warm as well. The reason is the biodiesel and the oil, or the oil and the isopropyl alcohol have to dissolve into each other for you to get a good reading. If you have globs in the bottom of your isopropyl alcohol when you put it in, you're not going to get a good reading at all. So heat both the isopropyl up and the biodiesel or the oil up First, don't heat them up together because that's uh, that can cause issues. But um, heat them up separately, get them in there, get a, go a good dissolved mixture, and then titrate. I like to titrate three times and take my average, and then you can go ahead and figure out your chemicals. And once you've got your chemicals, then it's time to start making biodiesel. Let's talk a little bit about your processing tank. If you're using a water heater, insulation isn't near as big of an issue as if you're using poly tanks or if you're using, say, a Bio Pro 190 that's a stainless steel tank. But if it's cold in the area that you're brewing in, let's say below 40 degrees Fahrenheit in that room, you're gonna to need to be able to insulate the tank somehow. Um, we've found people using poly uh, double foil back bubble wrap, uh, which is kind of a tin foil between two bubble wraps, works well. But the one that tends to work the best is a product called Armafoil. We put it on our BioPro and we're just flat out astounded how well it works. It's kind of like a cloth. They use it in attics to reflect heat up and keep heat inside and it's a uh, porous material, so air can come in and out, and we've put it on our BioPro, and it's done extremely well at keeping the heat in the tank. So that's a tip for brewing when it's cold out. If you can't heat your processor or the oil up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit in that room when it's cold, you're not gonna make good biodiesel. It's, you're gonna have marginal results at best. So you wanna be able to get the oil up to about 130 to 140. I like to do about 100, 135, 140 is my target temperature for the oil before I start making biodiesel. And I wanna be able to keep it there. If you can get it to that temperature, then you can go ahead and make the fuel. So now we've heated up our tanks, we've run the fuel through it, and we've now got fuel, and now it's time to wash the fuel. Well, if you let your fuel sit after you've made the fuel, and, uh, it gets cold in the room, it's going to turn to jelly too. And it's also going to turn into an emulsion, similar to kind of what this looks like. This is a little bit more orange. It'll look kind of like a milkshake, actually more whitish, kind of like this. See that white material? That's, that'll uh, 
that can happen when you go to wash fuel that's really cold. So for washing fuel, if you're water washing, my number one tip is to bring the temperature of your biodiesel back up to a reasonable temperature. I like to see it at 80 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. If you can get it warmer than that, that's awesome. Do it. But get it hot. If you try and spray water, even if it's heated water, onto biodiesel that's cold, you're going to get an emulsion. It's just fact of life. It's going to happen. So once you start washing the fuel, you need to be able to keep that fuel warm. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. In the BioPro, what we do is as soon as I start processing biodiesel, I, don't, I turn on my manual heat switch. I don't turn it off until I'm done with that batch. That means after the glycerin's settled, I, the heat stays on, so my biodiesel is nice and warm. Now, in poly cone bottom tanks, you don't really have that luxury. What you might be able to do is if you've heated it with an inline pump, you might want to transfer, uh, you can either heat it with an inline heater or you can transfer it back out of that polycone tank, heat it up in a barrel, and then put it back in, but you've got to be able to maintain that temperature. As soon as you start putting water on it, it's going to cool it down unless the water's hot, but even then you'll lose a little bit of the heat. You need to be able to keep the biodiesel, when you're washing it, between 80 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit to get a good wash. The hotter, the better. Um, be cautious with your polycone bottom tanks. Uh, they do tend to start to get soft at about and, uh, 130 to 160, depends on what kind of material it is. Um, if, you, if you heat a ha the tank too hot, I have seen some tanks melt and it is a mess and it's not fun. So if you're suspending a heater inside that tank as well, I've seen people do that, just make sure it doesn't come anywhere near the sides of those poly tanks and make sure that you monitor it. Uh, we had one customer that was making biodiesel in a 55 gallon poly barrel, had a one of those drop in 1000 watt heaters in it and the water froze up in the bottom. Well that allowed the biodiesel to get really really hot and it actually melted the side of his whole drum so it makes a mess. So you want heat but you want to be careful at the same time. Okay, Once you've got the biodiesel warm you can start mist washing on top of it with water. There's been a debate over the years as to whether to use hot water or lukewarm water. Um, I recommend hot biodiesel and lukewarm water. If you use cold biodiesel with hot water, you'll still get an emulsion. It's just not pretty. It's, not, it's just not going to give you a good fuel. Also, fuel that is uh, cold when you wash it is going to take longer. I have a lot of customers that call and say, gee, my, it's just taking forever to wash this. And we get talking and we find out they're doing it in an unheated garage. It's not the vessel's not heated and they have no way to heat the biodiesel. And that's because the water just doesn't like to go through oil when it's really, really cold. So you want hot fuel when you're washing it. Again, 80 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit is what I like to shoot for. Okay, once you have made uh, washed the fuel a few times and you're, washing, you're watching the wash water come out, if the wash water starts to come out clear, then it's time to pull a sample and do what I call a shake em up test. This is kind of an example of that. Uh, this is a sample of biodiesel. This is cold because it's been out in my shed. But um, you look at the water, you shake it like a margarita, and then you look at the water on the bottom. And you look to see how clear it is. This has got some haze on it from uh, frosting coming inside, condensation, so you can't really see it. But this water is actually really, really clear. Um, let's try that. There we go. And that's what you're after. You're after the water that uh, looks really, really clear so that you can continue to start drying the fuel. Uh, if your water, after you've shaken it and you let it sit for about an hour, called a shake-em-up test, goes hazy or it looks like skim milk or it's, it's just, it's not clear, you're not done washing. You need to continue washing until that water goes clear. Once it's clear, like this test, then you can go ahead and pull and sample and do an actual soap test on it and see what your soap levels are. Um, check our website for details on that. We've got a link down in the bottom as well to show you how to do soap testing. Once you've soap tested it and you're sure you've got all the soap out, then it's time to start drying it. There's many, many different ways to dry it, but remember, you're in a cold area, you've got an unheated garage, and you need to dry it. The easiest way to dry fuel uh, economically that I found is to heat it and circulate it and spray it back on top of each other, like with our drying tank. If you can get that oil nice and hot, again 80 to 100 degrees, if you can get it hotter for drying, uh, all the better, it's going to dry quicker. Um, and then circulate it and spray it on top um, in a nice fan-like pattern. And we've got a nozzle called a dry pro that works really well with that. Now, 
how long is it going to take? I get that question all the time. The question is, well, or the answer is as long as it takes to get it dry. Uh, there's a couple factors that influence that. One, the ambient room temperature. Two, the type of oil that you're trying to dry. Biodiesel, uh, different oils have different rates at which they're going to dry the biodiesel that they're made out of. Three, what the temperature of the biodiesel itself is, and four, what your relative humidity is. If you've got really high humidity, it's cold in the room, you've got thick oil, it's gonna take a while. But if you live in the desert, like where I live in Utah, uh, you can dry fuel in, in about you know three to four hours, pretty quick, um, doing this, this type of thing. Another tip, if you're gonna do a heat circulate spray method, take the lid off. I've talked to a lot of people that leave it on, they wonder why it's not getting dry. It's because the condensation goes up, hits that lid, and it falls right back in. That applies to any tank with a hole at the top. You cannot dry fuel effectively with a two inch bung at the top of your tank. You've gotta have it nice and open so that that moisture can escape. Uh, another trick is to take a fan and to blow across the top of the open vessel. That creates a low air pressure right above the top of the vessel. And the moisture as it evaporates gets sucked up and out and it will dry the fuel. How do you know when your fuel's dry? One of the tips that we use or the tricks we use is um, a water test kit. This kit's pretty cool. You put a uh, reagent in here and some oil in here. You shut it up and then you shake it and it will actually tell you it'll take a reading. It uses calcium hydride which in the presence of water produces hydrogen gas and it takes a reading on this gauge. Let's see if I can do that and then the reading will tell you how much uh, water content is in there. Um, limits for biodiesel, no more than 500 parts per million water in the, the finished fuel. Um, limits in the oil, uh, I don't like to have any more than about 2,500 parts per million or 0.25% water content in the oil before I start making biodiesel, particularly if I titrate high. Um, if you can get it down to 0.15% or 1,500 parts per million before you start making fuel, all the better. So those are kind of my general rules. Okay, so we now have fuel that we have processed, we've washed it, we've now dried it, it's now ready to use it. Well, what happens if you use fuel and you sit it in your garage for a while and it starts to go thick on you again? Well, it, it can gel. And this is actually some biodiesel that has gelled on us. If you let it warm back up, it will go liquid again and you can use it just like this. This is a little bit of glycerin on the bottom for a sample that we made. So you just have to let it um, get nice and warm. You need to know the gel point of your biodiesel. If you stick it in the truck and you're headed down the road and it gets real cold and the air blows on it, it's not going to be fun sitting on the side of the road with a gelled up fuel filter. We do sell fuel filter uh, heaters that you can put on the truck and that will help significantly to keep the fuel filter warm. That's the number one point where um, fuel gets plugged up. However, if it's real cold outside, you might gel the whole tank, so you need to measure that. One of the ways that you can measure what your gel point is, is you just take a jar of your biodiesel that you've made, and you leave it outside, and near the truck or wherever, and each morning when you come out, take a look at that. If it's gelled, probably not a good idea to drive biodiesel in that truck today, but if it's not gelled and it's staying good and liquid, you're going to be okay. A tip. Biodiesel in a small jar is going to gel a lot faster than biodiesel in a tank. So it's a really good early indicator that if this is gelled up, you, the fuel in the tank might not be gelled up, but you're getting there. So that's a trick that we use as well. So those are just some tips on making biodiesel. One, heat the brewing area. Two, if you need to move the oil when it's thick, use a, a really heavy duty transfer pump or a lift gate. Um, insulate your tanks with some really good insulation. Leave the heat on while you drop the glycerin. Um, if you got a BioPro, uh, before you start washing, heat the biodiesel back up. Check it for soap content after you've washed it so many times. Dry it. And then my final tip is I like to filter all of my fuel. I filter it to about 10 microns before it goes into the truck. We, we have a Ford 7.3 that we're feeding with biodiesel. If your uh, vehicle uses a smaller micron filter, you might want to go with a smaller one. There's lots of them. Brands that I like to use, we carry Goldenrod on our website, 10 micron. GPI, 10 micron. If you need to go smaller than that, uh, Simtech Biotech micro glass filters do a really good job as well. So those are just some tips on how to make biodiesel. Happy brewing, welcome to the season again, and we look forward to talking to you at Utah Biodiesel Supply. Stop by our website, utahbiodieselsupply.com, or you can go to utahbio.com. We have lots of tutorials on helping you make great biodiesel. Our goal is to help you get the best biodiesel possible so that you can travel on down the road for a fraction of the price of diesel fuel. Thanks for watching.